Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today, folks. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here with Rod Patterson, the Chief Executive Officer of Alterna Credit Union and Alterna Bank. Uh, before we jump into some of the conversation, Rod, can you tell us a bit about yourself, how you got into this role and, and how long you've been with Alterna? Yeah, thanks. Uh, good to see you, Marc-Andre. Um, you know, career banker, you know, through my, my whole life, uh, it's taken me around the world. I've worked uh, in Asia, you know, for a number of years. Uh, I've worked over in Europe. Uh, and, you know, the last seven years, I've been lucky to be the CEO. It's actually seven years this week, uh, the CEO of Alterna. And, like, and, you know, it, it just, the opportunity came to me years back um, when someone came and phoned me and said, look, we have a, a great challenge for you. There, there's an organization here that's been around for over 100 years, and they're looking for some new leadership and, and looking to transform and see what, you know, the financial service market, you know, is going to be like in the next decade. And, how Alterna can you know be positioned to go after that opportunity, and so I kind of I kind of I kind of leapt in uh, you know with it as a great challenge, a uh, personal challenge for me, and uh, I've never looked back. You know, even in today's climate, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't trade where I am for any place in the world. Well, that's that's really interesting, Rob. So I want I want to dig just a little bit on that. It kind of relates to the first question I want to ask you is um, what what you've worked in the banking sector formal, you know, outside the credit union space before. What What is your kind of observation of someone who's coming in, who's been in, now you've been in it for seven years, but what's your observation about the model and how it works or doesn't work in, in these kind of events? What are the advantages and disadvantages um, that you see yeah. flowing from this? You know, I think one of the biggest differences is the ability for us to be very patient. You know, to have patient capital and investment to take a much longer uh, perspective with our members on the initiatives we lead uh, with the transformation, you know, not being a, you know, a publicly traded organization where you have this other cohort of individuals that own the organization that are actually not necessarily, you know, the customers or the employees of, of the organization creates a very, you know, different dynamic and the ability for us to sit there and say, you know, let's do the right things. Let's invest, in the right areas, um, you know, for the future. And the only people we really have to explain that to is the people that actually own the organization, which are our members and the benefits of everything we're doing is in fact for the betterment of them. So there's a much tighter or more intimacy around our strategy because it is, you know, directly correlated to, to the members that are, are our owners, but also use all of our services. You know, back in my big five banking days, and I was also with, you know, a large global bank, you know, JP Morgan Chase, very different, right? It was all about shareholder value and how were we, you know, maximizing shareholder value. And the analysts, you know, would come in quarterly calls and beat you up on the last 90 days. And what were you going to do in the next 90 days? And how do you maximize value in 90 days? Whereas now we're able to sit there and, and, and you know, take decisions that are going to be over many years. When we take a look today, you know, in the COVID-19 situation, it's a lot easier for us to be, you know, providing relief to members, to be supporting them through these times when, you know, at the end of the day, we're just accountable to them. We just have to come back and have a dialogue with them about it, not this independent stakeholder group that's disconnected, you know, from the, the direct consumer of what we're, we're producing. So I would say that's probably the biggest, you know, delta between that sector and our sector. Now, I know, Rob, Ottawa in particular has had a couple of rough years from a flooding perspective. And I, as a, as a member of Alterna, I've received your emails and I know you've done some interesting things around that. Uh, maybe, you know, this is about more COVID-19, but I'm interested in hearing how that experience might have influenced or affected the way you're interacting with this one, uh, which is obviously very different and in some ways much graver. But uh, maybe you can talk about that, just linking those things uh, in time. Yeah, look, I mean, the interesting thing about Alterna is we've been around 112 years. And I was telling our members just recently at the AGM and telling our employees, we actually were around during the, the Spanish flu. You know, we came through the Great Depression, the world wars, you know, the financial crisis of 2008. And, you know, as you rightfully pointed out, you know, we had flooding, we had, you know, hurricanes and tornadoes coming through. You know, we, we've, we've lived through a lot of challenges in our 112 years. And, you know, the fundamentals don't change in any of those, those situations, right? How do we engage, you know, right away with our members to understand, you know, what their needs are, what their concerns are? Um, what are the tools that we're going to need to be able to deploy 
to affect their life and, and to help them through it. Um, how do we communicate? You know, trying to disseminate what is happening, you know, what disruption there might be, how we might be changing, you know, and providing our services during that time. So, you know, you know that's been a huge part of it. Um, the employees, which are a key part of our member interfacing, how do we take care of them, right? Whether it's, you know, the ice storms or whether it's, you know, been the flooding or any of those types of things. How do we immediately triage uh, our employees to understand how they're going to be impacted? Because the largest, you know, single point we have is our employee base to make sure that they're well, that they're healthy, that we understand their concerns, safety. Because once we've figured that out, we can deploy our people to take care of our members. And so when, you know, COVID-19 came out, I hate to say it, we were pretty ahead of the curve. In January, we had actually ordered hand sanitizer and gloves and started to secure, um, you know, those key resources because, you know, I, I grew up in Asia. And so I was connecting in with friends and family all through China. And we kind of saw that this was going to be coming over in some form into the Canadian market. Uh, we were one of the first to deploy plexiglass. You know, on, on the 16th of March, we put in our orders to get plexiglass before anyone ever had really thought about it in the uh, Canadian landscape and started to deploy it. Um, you know, those were the key things, you know, that were, that were really important to prepare our branch network and then to prepare our head offices. You know, with, by the, the 16th of March, we had deployed both of our, our head office in, in Toronto, or sorry, Ottawa and our regional office in um, uh, Toronto uh, to work from home. You know, 100% of, of those resources were working from home. Our call center was lifted and shifted in 72 hours, you know, just Herculean uh, task. And so that was really important for us to make sure that, you know, the employees were there. And then we moved, you know, to our members, you know, making sure we were on top of the government programs. We were lobbying the government, both provincially and federally, uh, to make sure we had access to those programs, um, disseminating it in, in a way that allowed our, our, our members to understand what qualified, what didn't qualify. Um, you know, that was critical for us at that time. And we've just kind of continued that line of communication. Now, Alterna, uh, at least part of Alterna kind of emerged from the CS co-op uh, world uh, in, in Ottawa, a lot of civil servants. Um, I, I'm just curious, we, we hear a lot about federal civil servants working long hours and, you know, roll out these programs. Has that kind of translated in any way in terms of your business? Do you see any of that or does that reflect in any way in terms of your relationship? Um, there are members. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they are, you know, the civil servants are our core membership and you know, I know that there's a lot of, uh, you know, talk about uh, out there about disseminating information and getting out, but they're working countless hours. Their lives have been absolutely disrupted like everyone else. And they're showing up every day to, you know, work on how to transform those programs, how to disseminate it. Um, there's a lot of complexity, right, in, in determining um, all the individuals that, that um, qualify and how to get them access and, and how to present it. You know, the political side of a government always gets ahead of the bureaucratic side, right? Um, it's just like in a, in a military, right? The strategy is to do something, but then the reality is you have to get the supply chain and everything moving, you know, behind, behind the scene. And, you know, our bureaucrats have been doing a great job of just soldiering on, you know, hunkering down, getting those programs rolled out. And, uh, you know, they've been actually very helpful in us getting access to information to be able to help disseminate it, you know, to our members and, our fellow credit unions. You know, I get a lot of phone calls saying, Rob, is there any way you can find out more information on this program or that program? And so we're, we're trying to be helpful. Uh, and our members have been very helpful in helping us get accurate information and disseminating it out into uh, to the uh, credit union space. That's really interesting. See, you know, I hadn't really kind of connected that dot, but you, your membership <laughs> consists in large measure of those people who are designing these programs. I, I've spoken to other credit unions who've had some challenges, especially the smaller ones, uh, kind of hooking in, particularly to the SEBA program. Um, what's your experience been like there? And, and can you can you kind of share some perspectives on that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we were one of the ones that wasn't on the list originally. Um, but, you know, we reached out, we talked into the Ministry of Finance, we talked to the minister in charge of the EDC and BDC. Um, we, we talked at the provincial level. And, you know, we heard great response. I mean, we were very quickly, you know, able to um, get through the process. We talked all along about the need to get all credit unions brought across. So it wasn't 
just as trying to get alternate, you know, across the line, but we were really lobbying on behalf of, of the entire, you know, you know, 250 credit unions that are out there to get everyone across the line. And, you know, it, it, it's a big thing for them to start to help educate them as well, because, you know, they understand credit unions, but they, they I, I don't think they've understood the complexity of 250 credit unions and, and you know, the different sizes and, and, and different, you know, uh, regionalities of, of us and the whole bit. So we've been really working um, to help for, you know, provide more insight into that. And I think you'll notice now that there's there's far more dialogue of, you know, the banks and credit unions in statements, right? The prime minister is talking about it. The premiers come out in Ontario and talked about it. You're seeing it more in other uh, provinces. So, you know, we're all starting to help um, put the spotlight on the, the cooperative system and how big it is. Uh, I'm not sure Ottawa quite understood how significant credit unions were to small business. And so why the CEBA program, you know, it was critical uh, to have everyone uh, on. And as you know, today, you know, is really the official day that every credit union is basically going to be on the program. And so that's great news. And, and so, you know, we're, we're alternative because of our closer proximity, we're, we're trying to, you know, live up to that sixth cooperative principle, you know, of, of helping and supporting other cooperatives, um, you know, by championing it because we have, I don't know, we have a bigger voice, but we, we can connect more conversations, right? We, we know more of the right people to have a dialogue with. Uh, our board has been fantastic. A lot of them are, are, you know, former, very senior civil servants, as you would know. And, and so we're leveraging, you know, those connections to help, um, you know, give the government the information they, they need to uh, help the cooperative system. Because, you know, we're a large part of the, the Canadian tapestry. And, um, you know, we're, we're really able to reach out to our members and make a difference, especially when we have the support, you know, from the federal and provincial government. So I just want to pivot a little bit from there, Rob, and I, this wasn't one of the questions I sent you in advance. But so uh, the, the, the cooperation amongst cooperatives, that principle number six, I've heard you speak about that in other contexts, uh, particularly Essential One. And do you, do you see anything kind of coming out of this crisis in terms of the system, the credit union system, kind of working together a little more closely or, or, do you, or not? Or what do you see kind of shaking out from all this um, in terms of the system? Yeah, um, well, I have hope. You know, I, 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 have, I have hope. Um, you know, here's, here's one of the things I know, you know, and I can talk to Ontario and, and, you know, specifically, you know, a lot of us did get together immediately and we're still, we have a call tonight, we have a weekly call, the top 10, you know, credit unions in the province. And, you know, I've been really impressed with the level of sharing, right? People sharing their stats, sharing what's going on, talking about, um, you know, their HR programs, talking about, you know, the, the deferral programs, um, what we're doing in branch call centers, that level of cooperation is at an all-time high right now. So, you know, it's, it's transparent, it's honest, um, it's more collaborative than I've ever seen it. So, you know, around all coming across the line as opposed to a few coming across the line. And so that has been very impressive and gives me a lot more hope because that level of, of cooperation and engagement wasn't there, you know, in the past, right? I think we all, we all know that. So it's interesting how a crisis, and I think a few of us even made that comment, you know, it's, you know, crisis creates that collaboration. The big thing now will be, can we sustain that, you know, as we come out of, of the crisis that we're in, in, you know, 2021, 2022, right? Can we sustain this for the long term? Can we speak with one voice, you know, in dealing with, per, you know, provincial and federal, uh, you know, regulators and, and government officials? Um, can we find more connectivity to make the, the segment stronger, um, you know, and, and sharing? You know, alternative, you know, I think you know as well, you know, we've always been supportive of smaller credit unions and, and we continue to do that and continue to help. And our hope is more and more of our peers will do the same thing, right? So that we can bring up the level of, of quality in the system and sustainability of the system. Uh, we have a unique style and a unique approach you know, of being able to, you know, support communities, support, you know, Canadians, you know, on a very national level, you know, keeping employment within Canada. Um, credit unions have done well uh, through the crisis because we didn't offshore jobs, right? We, we kept all our jobs onshore. So the ability to get to all our service providers, uh, our partners and continue on and sustain has been a lot better than uh, the big five banks or the mid-sized banks that have had problems when India locked down, Indonesia locked down, Philippines locked down, and they lost their labor sources. 
that's, a, that's another interesting one I can't help but pick up on a little bit. Uh, do you think uh, policymakers appreciate that, like that resilience that comes from being onshore, I guess, if, if, that's, not, if that's the term? Um, because that, that does seem important. And there's a lot of discussion now about the kind of fragile nature of these kind of global operations. Um, do you think that's something that the credit unions could accentuate in some of their conversations in the future? Or what are your thoughts on that? I, I do. And I think we're going to actually be a core part of reigniting the Canadian economy, right? We're going to be the ones working with the small business owners. As you know, the big five banks have had a terrible relationship with, you know, with, with small business. Um, credit unions have a phenomenal uh, connection, you know, with the heartland uh, of small business in Canada. Uh, agriculture really, you know, goes towards, you know, credit unions. Um, a lot of, you know, small, mid-sized manufacturing, you know, the whole hospitality trade, all of that really is in the credit union space. So our ability to sustain through this and then to help to reignite those parts of the economy across all areas of Canada. I mean, we all, you know, credit unions are the heart in, in, in rural areas, not the big five. So to bring Canada back online, to reestablish the economy and the fact that we can continue to employ domestically as we can expand um, through the uptake when we come out of this, we'll employ more domestically. We're innovating and showing innovation more domestically. That's going to you know, create the ability for Canada to, to grow. We're the ones that are focused on making sure rural Canadians have access to banking. We're the ones that are working to get you know, the internet out to the rural areas to provide online banking and, and digital banking and mobile banking to support those communities. We're the ones disseminating capital you know, getting the, the SEPA programs out into those, those communities, keeping branches open in those communities so they're high paying jobs that continue to sustain those marketplaces. You know, we're, we're the innovators at Alterna, it's our 20th anniversary of microfinance, right? You know, we put over $6 million out into the economy just on ideas of smart entrepreneurs, you know, people at risk and people at need to get their, their, their business up and going and to stimulate the economy. So. You know, I am, you know, waving the flag, you know, a fair bit here, but, you know, you know, I believe it, you know, it's real. And I think the policymakers, you know, federally and provincially are starting to understand that we are going to be a significant catalyst um, for, you know, sustaining the country and igniting the, the uptake once we come out of this. So just before I ask you to, you know, share anything I might have missed in our conversation, can you tell me a bit about how you see that future unfolding? You know, you talk about microfinance. I can imagine that um, there might be even additional call or demand for that kind of service coming out of this. But what about alternate just itself? Are you, you know, do you see more of a focus on online delivery or how does that all shake out for you after this, um, if you, assuming the economy kind of comes back to where it was before? Yeah, I think there's going to be a couple stages. I mean, first, you know, I always want to talk about our employees first, right? We're going to make sure their safety is there. So, you know, we're going to we're going to leave the plexiglass and the branch environments are still going to look different, right, for a significant period of time so that our employees are safe, they're confident in their work environment. You know, we are going to push out and evolve our digital channels to really be able to provide more um, servicing, onboarding, you know, uh, advisory capability. And then we're going to, for our members, we're going to home the two. So we're going to turn our branches into, you know, digital delivery um, engines. So, you know, that the, whether you come in or you want to digitally come in, our staff are going to be able to connect with you, right? We're going to create, you know, functionality in our mobile apps so that you can, you know, image your documents and share back and forth to originate products and services. But it's going to be with the same local people that are in your, your branch, you know, so you're going to have your, the true optionality of, hey, as, as we're coming out, I'm not totally comfortable, but I do like my, my, my banker that's in my, my local credit union. Well, they're going to be able to digitally engage with you visually, right? You know, if you want to come into, a, you know, a teller to, to pay some bills, well, you can click and we can have the camera on in the branch and you can now actually be doing it digitally, right? And, and still have that personal connection, right? That personal banter and conversation. So we're going to try and see how we take, you know, personal, localized, you know, branch intimacy and, and realize that in a digital world, while not looking to get rid of people, right? Like the, the, the purpose will not be trying to make this, you know, a heartless AI, you know, experience, but how do we still create, um, you know, intimacy of a relationship? Because at the heart of it, you know, the reason you've chosen a credit union is for that personal intimacy. 
right? That you know me, I know you, we can talk about family, we can talk about where you grew up. And that's a key part, a key keystone of the credit union way. That's how you do microfinance loans, because you know something about the people, you know something about the community. You know, that's not what you want to centralize. That's not what you want to take out of remote markets. You know, that's what we, that's what the credit union system is going to have to innovate at um, over the next, you know, 18 to 24 months. It's interesting, Rob, because I know you've been, uh, you know, a lot at the forefront of, from a credit union perspective anyway, a lot of the digital this and that, the fintech this and that. Um, but it's interesting the way you're kind of pulling these two things together and, and, and reminded that banking is, relationship banking is important <laughs> it's historically and, and still is, I guess, is what you're saying. Well, it is. And, and you know, I, I take it to social media as a classic, right? You can either, you can be a social media person. And I know I see some of my colleagues just post things, right? There, there's no engagement level. Or the question is, are you truly engaging on it? The, the easiest way members are getting a hold of me is through Twitter, right? They're getting on, they're sending me a question, they're following me, they're DMing me. And then I'm calling them back at night from six to 10 o'clock every night, seven days a week. I am doing about, you know, 12 to 20 calls back to members. Uh, I'm engaging them on social media and answering questions, getting the right people to get back to them. If there's an issue, come in and we'll chat, you know, on the DM side and we'll get people out to you. That's how you, you use technology to still have that intimacy and resolve, you know, people's issues, give them advice, you know, get to know on a personal level. If you were going to my Twitter feed, you know, you'll see today one of our members shared a very personal situation they had um, in their family. And, and, you know, I was able to, you know, communicate back with her, have a dialogue about it and, and empathize with her, you know, what she, she's going through. I've had that with a couple of other members in the last couple of weeks. That's, you know, we now have relationships. I have so many of our members. I now have a personal relationship over social media because we're engaging there, right? It's, it's my account. No one's monitoring it, but me, right? It, it, it's, it's that one-on-one -on -one relationship. That's what I want Alterna to do with all of our bankers, with all of our MSRs and with all of our members, right? Allow them to what's comfortable for them in their time. And over the next 24 months, physical is going to be less comfortable for sure, both from an employee standpoint and their standpoint. And so we still though need to be able to get that intimacy, that engagement, have an emotional connection, um, you know, be able to uplift them, energize them, get them confident in their future and um, improve. We're, we're part of the same community, right? We're in it together. And you know what? We're all going to get through that. We're going to get across this bridge to the other side. It is going to be better. Our grandparents had their tasks, you know, our parents had theirs. This is ours. And, you know, we have to be as strong as they were and we'll, we'll be okay. I don't want to sound too much like a booster either, but uh, it's hard to imagine a CEO at a big bank uh, doing what you're doing on an evening basis. Um, so, Rob, I, I'm done with my questions. Is there anything that you want to add or anything that you, you wish we talked about that we didn't? No, look, you know, maybe if I can just uh, on one thing, just to everyone, just remember to stay positive right now through this time. Look after your personal health, right? You know, make sure you're eating your meals, drinking lots of water, taking your vitamins. Um, you know, we have to check in on each other. You know, it's really important for this time to check in as peers. It's great to see you. You know, it was great for you to reach out. Really appreciated that. Um, but we have to check in with our members, our employees, and our families, right? And um, stay positive. You know, this too shall pass. Rob Patterson, thank you so much for a wonderful conversation. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Mark Andre. Great to see you again.